Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles and stand with us all over this building if you're able tonight. Ephesians chapter number four. Very familiar chapter, very familiar scripture probably to you if you've read the Bible. Amen. Ephesians chapter number four tonight. Look with me in two verses. Verse number 26 and verse number 27. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Do remember all the announcements. And if you don't remember them, grab the bulletin, go on Facebook and look at our page. Go online at our web page and look at that. They're all there. Ephesians 4, verse number 26. I love this verse. Be ye angry and sin not. And sin not. It's all right to be angry, but when you let sin get in, it's not all right. Amen. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Verse number 27. If you don't have this highlighted or underlined or circled or whatever you do marking in your Bible, you need to do it right now. Verse number 27 says, Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Don't you do it. Don't give place to the devil. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm going to preach a little short message, simple message, simply titled, On Standing Ground. Heavenly Father, in the name above every name, I thank you for what you've done here tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, I believe with every bit of fiber in my bones, Jesus, in my spirit here tonight, around this altar as we prayed, we prayed by faith, and the work of the Lord has been done. Lord, I'm gonna, we're going to hear uh, uh, of testimonies of miracles that happened from this night just simply by praying for people. Lord, I thank you for the Spirit of God that's worked so richly in our hearts in our minds, our spirits, and Lord, right now, just continue to further that through your word. Lord, help us tonight. Give us the anointing that we so much need in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody and tell them you love them. Praise God. Praise God. On standing ground, that's what we're going to deal with tonight. I come across a, a, an illustration and it said this, it said in the 1850s, a man by the name of John Gray took a job with the Edinburgh, Scotland Police Department as a night watchman. To keep him company during those long Scottish nights, he took on a partner, a terrier named Bobby. For several years, the two were a familiar sight as they trudged along the streets and the lanes of the city. In 1858, John Gray died of tuberculosis and was buried in the, in the local cemetery. After he was buried, Bobby, the terrier, refused to leave his master's grave. He sat there day and night, leaving only at 1 p.m. to go to the local coffee house he had frequented with his master each night. He would go there the owner would give the little dog a meal and he would return to his post at the grave of John Gray. The gardeners and keepers would, of the graveyard tried to evict the little dog, but they had no success. Eventually, they built a small shed beside the grave so the dog could have some sh sort of shelter. For the next 14 years, until his own death in 1872, Bobby, the terrier, maintained his vigil at his master's grave. After the death of this little dog, a bronze statue was erected and placed in the graveyard with this inscription, and I quote, Greyfriars Bobby died 14th of January, 1872, aged 16 years. Let his loyalty and devotion be a lesson to us all. Listen to that. And I want to say this. If a little dog can be devoted to a dead master, how much more should every one of us be devoted to our living Lord? Woo, there's so much preaching that. So let me say it again. If a little dog can be devoted to a dead master, how much more would every one of us should be devoted to our living Lord? There ought not to be a day you don't talk to Jesus. 
there shouldn't be a day that you you skip. I, I love what the, the old preacher said. He, he said, I, I went 15 minutes without talking to the Lord, and I felt convicted. Come on, somebody. That is devotion. That's on standing ground. And I, I want to say this. Devotion's a rare commodity today. However, among the people of God, it ought to be commonplace. Let me, let me, let me show you a couple of those devotions. In the Bible, there's, there's many instances of, of devotion, of steadfastness. One of that is Caleb in Joshua, chapter number 14, verse number 10, 11, and 12. Let me read that to you because he persisted on relying on the Lord for gaining his inheritance. Here's the scripture. Now, as you can see, the Lord has kept me alive. This is Joshua talking. As well as he promised for all these 45 years since Moses made this promise, even while Israel wandered through the wilderness. Today, I'm 85 years old. I'm as strong now as I was when Moses sent me on that journey, and I can still travel and fight as well as I could then. How I many would be glad to say that? He said, so give me the hill country that the Lord promised me. You will remember that the scouts we found, the descendants of Anak living there in great walled towns. But if the Lord is with me, I will drive them out just like the Lord said. That's on standing ground. Then in 2 Samuel, you'll remember if you've been around here long enough, you've heard me preach on the man, the story named of Shammah. He stood in the midst of the pea patch and he defended his ground. That was God's ground that he had been given to him. And he defended. How many knows that standing ground? I'm not going anywhere, devil. I'm standing. I'm standing. I'm standing on the promise. That is devotion. Then there's the, the Lord who, of course, who endured the great hardship to the saving of souls, who when he looked death in the eye, the Bible said in Isaiah 50 and 7, that the Lord set his face like a flint, even looking at death in the eye. There's many, many, many other examples in the Bible that we could name, but here the point is clear tonight. God intends, and I want y'all to really get this, God intends for every one of us that are saved to stand our ground. Every person that say, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 says, Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Come on, that's standing ground. Let me show you something. Verse number 27, he says, Give no place to the devil. Now, the word place comes from the Greek word topos, T-O-P-O-S. It's where we get our word topography. It refers to a piece of ground. In other words, the Bible instructs us not to give the devil any ground in our lives. As I was studying this, I was thinking, what if my neighbor decided one day to take up the fence and move it 10 feet over into my property? Well, me and my neighbor, we'd have a quick conversation. That's my land. I went and bought that land over 20 years ago when it was nothing but woods. You see, I've worked hard on that land. When I didn't have anything but a machete and an axe, I worked hard on that land. I got off work, and I, I, I put my working clothes on, and I would get off every day, and I'd work till dark on that land. I spent hard time. I, I planted grass on that land. I have smoothed that land out. I've saved some good trees and cut some bad ones out. I've worked. I worked hard for that well I put on that land. I worked hard for that septic tank I had to put there before that house was put there. I worked hard for those houses sitting on that land. I worked hard for the pleasures in life that I have sitting around that house. I, I've worked hard for that above ground pool in my backyard. I've worked hard for all those things. And if somebody moves his fence 10 foot onto my property, me and him going to have it out. And if that don't work and he don't move the fence back to where his line is, then I'm going to the court. And in the court, I can take a document that says, this is my land, this is the survey, and that fellow's moved his fence on my land, and y'all better tell him to get it back over there. 
Then the sheriff is going to come and he's going to say, okay, here's the court document, move your offense. And if that don't work, we go into court. And on and on and on until it gets settled and that's my land. It's the same way it is with me and you and Jesus. The devil, come on, you ever heard the saying, if you give me an inch, he'll take a mile? In the death, I know people that keep on saying, you know what, I've got things right with Jesus, and, and if that devil comes across that line again, me and him going to have it out, and you just keep drawing another line. You back up, draw another line, and the devil keeps on getting on your property. And if people will learn, wait a minute, I'm on standing ground with Jesus. Me and Jesus has come to some terms. I've given my life over to him, and he's not getting, the devil's not getting in my life anymore. Because I'm standing. God's plan for us is that we learn as Christians to stand our ground instead of giving it up. Oh, my, my, my. And I want to speak on that thought tonight. Standing ground. Let this get in your heart. I want you to notice three thoughts. Number one, let's talk about giving ground. And I thought about this. Too many are giving up ground in their lives today. Somebody say amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11 says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Advantages. Let's study that a minute. A beachhead is a little piece of ground from which the enemy can launch assaults against every other area of our lives. The beachhead at Normandy gave the Allies a foothold on the continent of Europe. And I want to say when we allow Satan to get a foothold or a beachhead in our lives, we're giving him ground. And as we give him that ground, he can attack our families. He can attack our church. He can attack our community. We must not give him ground. You don't know how the world's in the shape it is? They give him ground. Mm, my, my, my. Let me show you some ground. We've already given up a lot of ground this day, haven't we? We've given up public ground. What do you mean by that? Jesus ain't welcome in this world anymore. We've given him public ground. He's not welcome in our schools. He's not welcome in our courts. He's not welcome in our public square. Many people have forgotten the Word of God. It's amazing how many people, you know, it used to, people knew the Word of God. People don't know the Word of God no more. Come on, we've given it up, haven't we? Most people don't we, we walk out there. Now, now, I get the chance to do it. And pastor in this community and other places, I'm, I get the chance to go talk to people. I'm not a shy person. I'll go up to them. And it's amazing that people, when you go to say, let me pray for you, they don't even know what you're fixing to do. I mean, it happened right here on this property today, this afternoon. We've had somebody come up and, and, and we, we give them a few drinks and food we had back there in the fellowship hall and, and, and we say before you go let's pray they don't know what in the world's going on eyes get wide open I ain't letting anybody leave this church without me laying hands on them <laughs> hey, amen come on the, the church has lost that ground scared to offend somebody come on folks this is some ground we got to get back Oh, what about parental ground? Many people's lost, I'm going to say this with everything in me, a lot of people's lost control over their children. Few parents, they don't punish their children anymore. They've forgotten what the Bible teaches. Oh, don't give me any slack over this now. Parental ground. Then there's praying ground. There's no Daniels in the day. They're, they're, they're strained. They're too carnal. They, they can't uh, 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 envelop an effective prayer life anymore. They've forgotten about the power of a praying Christian, James 5 and 16. Then they've given up preaching ground. Old-fashioned preaching's ridiculed, ain't it? <laughs> Many have forgotten what the Word of God is anymore. We've also given up ground through the ignorance of Satan. We've given up ground uh, uh, because we don't know who the Savior is anymore. First John 4 and 4 says, Greater is he that is within who? You than he that is within the world. We've given up ground through the ignorance of our own standing. 
What do you mean by that? We forgot who we are in Jesus. It's time we understand we're children of the Most High God. I'm a child of God. Who are you? I'm a child of God. He's the king of the universe. He's the king of the world. He can hold it in the palm of his hand. Let's figure out who we serve again. Somebody say amen. We've also given up ground through sin, and I want to show you something about sin. Sin grieves the spirit. Sin grieves the spirit. Ephesians 4.30 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Sin also gives ground to the devil. Sin allows the devil a foothold from which he can attack your life. Let him in and he'll begin to attack. Come on, he's coming whether you want him to or not. Study the book of Job. Job didn't ask for all that stuff. He got it anyway, but he overcame. Come on, somebody. I said he's coming anyway. But don't you give him any ground that's not his. Now let's talk about gaining ground. We've talked about giving ground. Let's talk about some gaining ground. Surrendered ground can be reclaimed. <laughs> How many knows, but it's always costly. Surrendered ground. Warfare is costly, folks. If you'll study that out, it's always costly. Men and materials. It's always costly. There are just two ways that I can find to regain the spiritual ground that's been lost to the enemy. Here they are. Number one, only two ways that I can find, especially when we're preaching on this standing ground, number one is repentance. Everybody shout repentance. Come on, listen to that. Matter of fact, turn with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Turn with me there real quick like. 2 Corinthians Chapter number 10, look, look with me in verse number 3. The Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Somebody ought to shout <laughs> My, 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 to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So I repent. We've got to realize that spiritual victory cannot be accomplished using fleshly methods. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. Realize spiritual victory cannot be accomplished by using fleshly methods. And that's the way the world, and sadly, it's become a trend in the modern church. Just do it the fleshly way. What we need to understand is that power comes from doing God's business God's way. God's business God's way. Hallelujah. The choice is ours. The choice is ours. Then... The other way, two ways, number one, repentance, then number two, re fell in love with the Lord wonderful feeling I, I do I remember I played around with Christianity till I was 15 years old I played around with all that but I got sincere with the Lord at 15 years old and I remember the love that swept my soul at 15 years old I'd never felt anything like that I played around when the, chair, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the preacher would give the altar call. You know, I'd go up there and I'd kneel down and I'd find a, a, an altar and I, I'd pretend like I was praying, but I never really fell in love with Jesus until I was 15. At 15 years old, God got a hold of me and I got a hold of him. And there was a, come on, somebody, there, there was such a, such a spirit that come inside of me. Hallelujah to God. Ain't it time tonight we get that back? 
We better get it back in our homes. We better get it back in our families. We better get it back in our churches. It's time tonight that we reclaim victory. Reclaim some land. It's time to rise up and be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Now let's talk about some garden ground. I want to say this, the church ain't going down. It is not going down. Where's she going then, preacher? She's going up. She's going up. I know we've given up some precious ground and a lot, but by the grace of God, it's going to be reclaimed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We still got a lot of ground we have not lost to the enemy. A lot of ground. We've got to do everything that is necessary in our power in Jesus to not lose any more ground. To not lose any more ground. You now have been set free by the truth. John 8, 32, you'll know the truth, and the truth shall set you free how do I remain free walking in the truth walking in the truth it ain't enough to carry it in your hand it's the truth in your heart that's going to keep you in victory I can carry a Bible all I want to come on there's not going to be no osmosis happening I got to get it in my heart I got to open it up I got to get it for myself I've got to understand it for myself I've got, come on, I've got, uh, uh, I know nobody wants to listen to a preacher now. <laughs> I'm going to listen, I'm going to listen, hey, I'm going to listen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and back again Sunday. i got to keep it in my heart. I told you all this morning, if I didn't keep Jesus in my heart, I'm a mean fella. I want to be. In my heart, in my flesh, I want to be mean. Come on, I've got to keep my flesh under subjection. I got to tell that day, every time he tries to rise up in me, I got to tell him, get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of the Lord. I can't lose that ground. I'm going forward in Jesus. I can't lose it. Psalm 119, 111. Oh, my, my, what does it say? Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. It's there. I put it in my heart. I'm not just carrying it under my arm or in my hand, but I put it in my heart because I don't want to sin against God. Whoa, well, that's guarding your ground. Now, ultimately, I know truth is a person. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Only a pure, holy, and honest relationship him, with Him, rather, can produce lasting victory. In the end, truth is all we have, and it's got to be protected. Somebody say amen. Let me say that again. It's all we have. Truth has got to be protected. If we're to reclaim some lost ground and guard the ground we still have, we've got to walk in the truth. Go study Revelation 3, 1 through 6, the Lord's Word of the Church of Sardis. We've got to know how to live in the Word. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to stop right here. We've got to know how to live in the Word. We've got to know the Word. We've got to learn how to walk in truth by being honest before the Lord and about the conditions in our own heart. I want to say this. We're so worried about everybody else's heart. You better be worried about your own. I said you better be worried about your own. Trying to pull something else out of somebody else's eye. Jesus said, look in your own. Come on, somebody. We better guard our own ground. I'm looking at a church that I believe that says, devil, you're not going to get an advantage in my life. I told you all this morning, if you'll play around with the devil, God might just give you what you want. It's time we stand some ground. It's time we stand some ground. Will you stand tonight? I want you, everybody in this church, if you're physically able, I want you to grab somebody by the hand. And we're going to pray tonight for each and every person in here. Hallelujah. I want to combat the devil right here for a minute. We've had a wonderful service before the preaching. And I want to keep this combat up right here. I, I want to go to war against the devil. We sung that song, This Means War. Come on, so what do I do, preacher? If we're going to do that, we've got to enter into combat. 
What do you do in combat? You enter and attack the strongholds. Come on, I'm not talking about the the bomb that, that we, the mother of all bombs that we sent over to Syria. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about we enter into the attacks of strongholds that the devil has on your life. In the night when you pray, I want you to think, what stronghold does the enemy have on my life? For some, it'll be the, uh, your tongue. Some, it'll be your eyes, your thoughts, your actions, your words. What, what is there a stronghold? And then you go in and you take it back. That's war. And I want to challenge all of us in prayer here tonight to take it back tonight. Family, children, your personal walk with the Lord, anything that you've yielded to the devil, I want you to take it back. If you want victory, God's got it. Now, if you, I said if you want victory, God's got it. Come on, somebody. He's given you the strength to go back and get it. Heavenly Father, I pray for this congregation right now as we're fixing to enter into warfare in prayer. God, I pray that you'll give them the strength right now. Lord, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost.